Welcome to the great state of Texas. We're here uh, to present the all new 2017 Porsche 718 Boxster and Boxster S and Cayman and Cayman S. We have two S models present here with us. One of the big changes for the 2017 Boxster and Cayman models is the new generation of engines. We have flat four cylinder turbocharged uh, engines producing 300 horsepower in the standard car and 350 horsepower in these S models. The most uh, advantageous aspect of those engines is really the torque. The torque is at 280 foot-pounds for the standard car and 309 foot-pounds for the S. And it's available from around 1900 RPM all the way to 4500 RPM. So those RPM ranges where you're really operating the car on a day-to-day -day basis, you have a lot more thrust at your disposal, making the car a lot more lively, a lot more responsive in those RPM ranges. The car still does rev very high. It revs to 7500 RPM and it has fun doing so. So it's still very responsive. It's not a laggy turbo engine, but it does offer a lot more torque for day-to-day -day driving. These cars are very fast. These two cars are equipped with uh, PDK, I believe. Uh, the PDKS goes from zero to 60 in four seconds flat and has a top track speed of 177 miles per hour. There's also many changes to the chassis. We have a new PASM adaptive damping sport suspension with a 20 millimeter lower ride height. Good compliance on the road, but very little body roll. Car feels excellent. There's a new steering rack taken from the 911 Turbo. The steering is very direct, very agile. Bigger brakes for the cars due to the increase in power. So an overall huge step up in terms of performance. But the car is still very livable. livable. It's efficient, it has good trunk space. It's comfortable to use um, on the road. As, and um, just a terrific blend of balance and uh, of a sports car that you can still take to dinner or on a long trip. Along with the technical changes, this car has also had significant changes made to its design uh, in the cues. You'll notice the Porsche logo type in this area uh, that was fitted here. The front and rear fascia are different. These tail lamps are different. And owing to the increased air supply that's needed for the turbocharging and the intercoolers, these vents are now significantly bigger than on the previous car. Basically, in terms of body panels, every single panel on this car is new, except for the roof or the convertible top uh, and the front and rear luggage compartment lids. So the middle top section of the car with the windshield as well is the same. Everything else, the, the uh, door, the front and rear fender, is all the front and rear fascia is all new. Uh, another styling cue uh, that's not present on this car, but we do offer as an option are LED headlights, uh, which are available for the first time on the Boxster and Cayman. We did not offer that option on the previous car. So visually as well as technically, some very significant enhancements. The interior we're seeing the two biggest changes being the new navigation system, uh, offering the option of a navigation module with. Uh, Apple CarPlay, Wi-Fi, Google Street View, Google Earth, so a lot more interactive than the previous system was. And also the new steering wheel. This car is equipped with the GT Sport steering wheel, which has a smaller diameter, giving you a sportier feel when you're driving the car. And um, with the Sport Chrono package, um, the steering wheel is equipped with a mode switch that offers four different modes. Um, you can toggle between the the normal position, Sport and Sport Plus, which offers successively higher uh, aggressive settings for throttle response, for transmission calibration in terms of the shift points and shift time, uh, and also this individual mode, which lets you select your uh, preferred damper setting in terms of the suspension, throttle, transmission, and so forth. On cars with PDK with a dual clutch transmission, we also have this Sport Response button in the middle. When that is pressed, regardless of the mode you're in, the car selects the optimal gear for passing and puts the car in an overall in a very high performance mode so you can extract the most power and performance out of the car for 20 seconds. When you press it, you'll notice that in this cluster, it's counting down the, um, the time that this mode is available. And it starts at 20 seconds and counts down from there. When it is finished, you can use it again and again as much as you want. And it's great, for example, passing a truck on um, the country road. And then once you're done with that, the car will default back um, once it's run out of time to the setting you were in before. 
So a lot of enhancements made to be able to extract the most out of the car and really cater it to your specific uh, driving situation. The so the the biggest uh, the biggest challenge uh, from a technology standpoint was retaining the design of the car. Um, oftentimes, when you change uh, an engine type, especially if you're going from naturally aspirated to forced induction. Um, you need a lot more air to cool a turbocharged engine, so the design of the car sometimes changes significantly. That was not an option here. The design of the Boxster and the Cayman is very characteristic, and we didn't want it to change. So the best solution was to offer uh, the flat four-cylinder engine, which provided a lot more torque, a lot more horsepower, a lot more than could have been extracted from the previous six-cylinder, because you would have had to get a similar amount of power from the six cylinder and I don't think technically it would have even been possible to get it to comparable levels of this turbocharged engine, you would have had to do something like increase the displacement of the six cylinder engine further which would have brought the fuel consumption up, hence the efficiency down. So retaining the efficiency of the predecessor while greatly increasing the performance um, resulted in choosing the flat four cylinder um, boxer engine which is all new for this car. So that was the, the most efficient solution in terms of bringing power levels up while retaining the efficiency. Um, Cayman is priced a little below the Boxster because it's the coupe. The Cayman starts at $53,900. The S model Cayman starts at $66,300. Uh, and the Boxster models are priced at $56,000 for the standard and $68,400 for the S. And all of that, uh, you need to add the $1,050 destination charge on top. The Boxsters are at Dealers Now, and the Cayman will follow in November, but you can order it now. So, um, we're going to go out and drive some more, and uh, hope to see you guys again soon.